Good morning, I think mainly gentlemen and a few ladies. Um, welcome, and it's a privilege for me to be upstairs or upstage or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Normus mentioned a little bit about the new LoRa WAN or the LoRa gateway they've got. And when they actually asked me to have a little bit of a conversation about that to you guys, I got very excited. Because that's out of my history, you stu I've studied electronics, and one of the subjects, or my major subject at that stage, was automation and control. And when I tried to figure out what is IoT, at Murrow, we're trying to work with IoT, or we're investigating IoT for a few years now. And every time when I speak to somebody about IoT, I get a different perspective, I get a different view. So what is IoT? According to Wikipedia, the Internet of Things is a system of interrelated computing devices, mechanical, digital machines, objects, animals, people, that are provided with unique identifiers and have the ability to transfer data over a network without requiring human-to-human -human or human-to-computer interaction. Now, I think if you try to analyze that, you will realize that's basically everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> although we've got a little bit of a description of what IoT would be, it, it, it still, it had me. So I try to go back a little bit into my own history, and I had a look, is this new to us, or is it stuff that we actually know for quite some time? And I also try to figure out what do we call it. And some people call it machine-to-machine -machine language. Cisco Systems call it the Internet of Everything. Rusiner call it a world of a world size web. And in the Terminator movies, they were talking about Skynet. All right, so there's, there's, there's quite a little of a bit of naming also for the Internet of Things. I'm still a little bit confused what it is. So I try to go back to my own history of instrumentation. Um, uh, instrumentation and control in India is a branch of engineering that studies the measurement and control of processes variables and the design and implementation of systems that incorporate them. Processes variables include pressure, temperature, humidity, flow, uh, force, and speed. So once again, did I get a real answer of, of what this IoT is? It's, it's white. It's, it's doing everything. We had a little bit of a look at what the control engineers do. They control this. They use machines. And I realized we actually have got IoT for many, many years. But we restricted ourselves when we were doing it as information and control to factories, to plants, and whatever. So now that we call it IoT, we basically just start thinking out of the box. We take this old concept of, us, of sensors, we measure something, we send it to a database, we work with this database, we take decisions, either we go back to our sensors or attenuators, and we make specific decisions and we do something. So let's try and have a look where can we use this Internet of Things. And I came to the conclusion that can a sensor measure it? What is it? Anything. Can a, an actuator respond to it? What's that it? Anything. Then we call it a thing. So now we've got the thing. We must still create the internet for it. Can a thing be connected to the internet, the gateway, via a local network? Can a thing save the measurements on the cloud? Or can you analyze and respond to the measurements? And if your answer is yes and yes and yes for those three, then you've got the Internet of Things. How wide is that? Very wide. All right, and that is one of the challenges we've got with IoT. At the moment, there's not a, rules, a lot of rules already defined. Whatever we can measure and we can send to a sort of a database, we can analyze it, it's called Internet of Things, and we can play with it. So what can we measure? 
we can measure, as I mentioned, there we've got it, there's transportation, there is uh, security, there is environmental. Can you think about something that you cannot measure? Basically not. There's anything that we can measure, and we can convert that to some sort of signal, and that signal, we can give it a value, that value we can send off to a cloud somewhere, and we can have third-party software analyzing that, and we can do something with that value. Internet of Things. And we've got a system here, it's in France, it's called BERT, or BERT, or whatever they call themselves. They work with a water reticulation system. Now, I've heard a lot of guys in South Africa also speaking, they say, yes, we're gonna have the Internet of Things, we're gonna go and support the municipality, Instead of them having meter readers, every month going to your meters and take a reading, you're going to have an Internet of Things sensor on my water utilization for every household, and we can send it off to the municipality. Yes, Internet of Things, a very good application of Internet of Things. But have a look what these guys have done. Um, on top there, they've got the connection to the Internet. Then they've got full control in the building of when to switch the water on and off. They are measuring the pressure on the water systems in the pipes so they can detect leaks at any time. They are managing the sewage systems and everything. So what's the limitation? Your imagination is the limitation. If you can measure it, if the sensor can convert it to some sort of signal that you can take somewhere else, you can analyze it, you can use it. This is the main device they're using, those guys. As you can see, it's a fairly conventional water flow meter. You still got the analog meter on it because people don't like to see something that looks like it's out of a um, scientific movie. So yeah, you've got it. It's a fairly normal piece of equipment. And on top of it, we've got the little, in this case, LoRa radios that's doing the measurement, converting the digits over to a, and receiving a signal back that can actually control the water, switch it on and off. And that's as simple as the sensor is in this specific case. What do these guys achieve over the, about a year that they're running with it? They have detected 1,200 water leaks. So were they just measuring little readings and send it off to the municipality, save a little bit of meter reader to go out? No. They were thinking out of the box, they were making it much, much bigger, and they could have saved that. In the process of detecting the leaks and stuff, they have saved over 1 million cubic liters of water. And they have increase their efficiency by about 8%. What would you guys like to do with this? What's your limitation? Nothing. Well, that's how the system basically works. We will have the sensors coming in on the left-hand side. So we've got sensors. The sensors will feed to a gateway, and that's where Mikritik is coming into the picture. They feed to the gateway. The technology, and we'll discuss technology now, there's various technologies coming from the sensor to the gateway. From the gateway, the gateway basically converts, and that's what the Mikritik do for us. The Mikritik, in this case, take LoRaWAN, they take the LoRa protocol, and they convert it to normal Ethernet, and they send it off to the internet, up to some sort of cloud system. In this case, it's a, what's a synergy? cloud system, there's lots of them, we'll go through a few of them just as samples, and then you can take the readings that you get to third-party analyzing software, third-party servers, some of the cloud servers have already got those analyzing software on the server, depending on how much you're willing to pay, and you can analyze and you can make the measurements, you can switch on and off, you can do whatever you like. The system that um, Mikritik involved in at the moment is the Things Network. Uh, it's not the only network you can connect to, but by default, the little IoT kit from Mikrotik 
has got the addresses and everything for in for this service. And as I explained to you, you've got your devices, your so-called things. From your things, you've got some sort of communication, your gateway. In Mikrotik's case, they have opted for the LoRa system. From the gateway, you would go up to the network, the cloud system via internet, and then you can come down again. What we did is on one of our samples, we had my son programming a cell phone, and on the cell phone, we interpret the data that we got from the network, and we could show people the temperature on my table at work on a cell for them anywhere else in the world. As simple as that. Let's have a look at the different technologies we've got. The first one we're going to have a look at is uh, from the sensors to the gateways. And that's where I think one of the most important parts of this whole exercise. Uh, Norm has mentioned on the normal gateway using the internal antenna. He said up to about a kilometer or so. I do believe you'll get it. That's about a 1.6 dB antenna that's in that kit. You can go to that external antenna, and then that range will go up to about 15 kilometers. That's part of the LoRa. That's part of the good thing about LoRa. What can we censor? I think I have discussed that numerous times now. There's a few samples of what's available. Anything that you can purchase some sort of sensor that can convert to some sort of digital voltage, multi amp, uh, multi, uh, mul let's try again, milliamps, <laughs> and whatever the case might be. As long as I can convert it, obviously I can electronically transfer that signal to my gateway via LoRaWAN or any of the other technologies, get it into the internet and analyze it. Um, I'm a little bit of uh, electronic, what will I call myself, a little bit of a nerd with it. So I love to play on the left-hand side. So what sensors can we use? I've discussed that numerous times. There's a lot of sensors that we can use. You can purchase them for quite cheap in any electronic shop. From there, one of my toys is to go to the Arduino boards. I don't know who of you are familiar with the Arduino boards. I see a few of you. Yes. Arduino is just a little multi um, microprocessor that's already embedded on a board for us, and there's lots and lots and lots of literature available on it, and lots of lots of sketches that can interface some of those sensors for us, and we don't have to go and redevelop all that software code. The coding is done for us, and we can build nice little samples. That's one of the samples that I built to get information into the system, I'll show you later. And then obviously from there, we can actually design devices, things, actually sensors on the right-hand side of the screen. If we do that connection that I was talking about from the thing to the gateway, we've got various options. One of the most popular options is obviously battery-operated equipment. Let's think about, he was talking about a farm. So I've got animals that's confined in a specific area. So I would like to put a collar, or even with nanotechnology, I can go into the skin. What would be one of my very, very big prerequisites? Battery power, small batteries. So as soon as I think you all know, there's no win-win situation in wireless, if you start going to something that's very low in power, I start compromising in bandwidth, or I start compromising in distance. So what I would like to have is a device that's going to sit in the right-hand corner on this graph. So I would like a device that's going to give me lots of distance, and a device, oh, not right-hand, uh, more up, higher up, so it's on the right-hand side, more to the top. So I want that distance, I want throughput, and obviously I want this thing to be as low as possible on power consumption. Do we get that combination? No. Will we ever get that combination? I doubt it very much. You will always have that payload. If you've got high throughput, it's going to be higher on power, etc. So the two technologies that's getting used a lot is LoRa, as you can see, and Sigfox. That's where you get fairly low power consumption 
you've got very nice distance, what's your disadvantage? You've got very low bandwidth. You cannot push through a lot of data. So will IoT in this specific scenario be videos and voice and stuff? No. Will it be a GPS reading of where this animal is at the moment? Yes, because how much data are we sending if we send that GPS reading? Minute. If we take an electricity meter reading or a water meter reading, what sort of data am I moving? Minute. So the LoRa and the Sigfox is the ideal technologies for getting there. And I must tell you, since I started with this and I'm downloading white papers, I'm overwhelmed by emails. And I think we will have to put some of your systems in on my network also <laughs> to filter the content. Because obviously people are picking up that I'm searching a lot on this. And there's newer technologies on a daily basis that people try to convince you that it's going to work better than the technologies that we've got at the moment. So let's have a look at the two that we've got. We've got Sigfox, a very popular one, and a lot of people in South Africa using it. I had a look at the Sigfox, Sigfox Mac maps, and there's very good coverage of Sigfox in South Africa. It is a paid service. It's based on cell phone technology. So the guys t distributing the Sigfox uh, gateways or the connection points in South Africa is using the cell phone towers. And that's why we've got very good coverage, but you do pay for it. It's a low power one. We've seen in the blocks that it's low power. It's low data rate, so it's ideal for IoT, the sensors that we're going to use. What's one of the disadvantages? If I'm in an area where there is no Sigfox available, can I go and put my own gateway on? No. It's supplied by the service provider. And the other advantage is long distance. So there's a lot of good things for Sigfox going. Let's have a look at LoRa. LoRa, on the other hand, uh, I could not find real maps of the coverage in South Africa. Is that a big problem? No. Why not? Because Mikrotik is now involved with LoRa. <laughs> it cost you about 4,000 rand. It's going to be less than that. I haven't got the pricing yet. Uh, I don't think it's on our price list yet because it's so new. But it's definitely going to be about below 4,000 rand to create your own gateway. So if there's no coverage map and you want coverage in that area, 4,000 bucks, you've got a gateway. You just put it up yourself. It's a free service. Obviously, it's free for the other guys going onto my little gateway. It cost me three, 4,000 bucks for the start anyway. It's also low power. Sigfox is a little bit lower. But for Sigfox to be a little bit lower in power consumption, Sigfox cannot put the amount of data through that LoRa can. So LoRa is a little bit higher in data throughput, a little bit higher in power consumption. You can set up and manage your own network. We've discussed that already. And it's also long distance. You'll see you get approximately the same distances out of LoRa and Sigfox. Let's have a look at the second portion. This is where we got the gateway and we want to push the information through to the network. And that's where Mikrotik is now coming into the picture. There's lots of different gateways. And I actually saw that little picture and I don't know who it is and what it is. It looks like a little Raspberry Pi that's got some sort of radio card on it to connect to the internet. And you can go and have a look on the gateways. There's lots of them. Uh, there's a few names involved. Why do Mikrotik stand head and shoulders above any of these devices? Because together with your little gateway, you also get a full layer 3 router. And in the LoRa kit that Mikrotik is supplying, you get a full 2.4 gigs access point. So you can do all your normal networking, you can still do that, and on top of that, you score the LoRa gateway. Not any of the other equipment can supply that. Uh, the Things Network themselves, uh, the one that 
Mikritik have started a, a relationship with, sells a gateway, I think based on a Pi, on a Raspberry Pi, and they charge you about 300 euros for it. So for starters, they're already more expensive than the Mikritik, and that's about the cheapest of all the gateways that I could find. So they're more expensive, and they are purely just a LoRa gateway. No luxury of a Mikritik router and Wi-Fi and everything involved. So I do believe Mikritik has got a winning recipe here. So at the moment, there's two cards available. It's the um, LoRa 8 and the LoRa 9, and there's the frequencies in South Africa, we work with the European standard, so we use the LoRa 8, the 863 to 870 frequency range. <coughs> you can also buy the full kit, and we can get that external antenna. I think the internal antenna, yeah, there it is. It's about 2 dBi. I think the other information I got say about 1.6. So obviously a small antenna. If we start pushing the 6.5 dB antenna, we're obviously going to get much, much, much bigger distances out of this guy. Yes, a little bit of a map that I could find at this stage with LoRa on it. And as you can see, the numbers of official devices is still very, very low. Now, I don't know if one of the Mikritik guys are still in the office. If you supply me with the correct antenna and the <laughs> sample kit, I'm willing to add two new boxes for you in the Pretoria area. One at my house and one <laughs> at the Miro offices so that we can expand this network. I do believe there is lots and lots more. This is only the networks that's officially um, registered via the Things Network. All right, let's have a look a little bit at the networks that's available. Is there only one network available? Is it only the Things Network? No, there's a lot of them also. And all of them give you different services, different pricing, different whatever. Uh, to give you some sort of idea of the projections, the estimations, in, what was it, 2012. Am I reading my screen correct? 2012. They said we've got a human population of about 7.1 billion. At that stage, we already have got about 7.5 things that we can monitor. And as you can see, that graph is just going up. So by 2020, at the moment, we talk about 50 billion things that people would like to monitor. Uh, I do believe that number is even going to go up faster than what we might project. Because what can I monitor? I can monitor absolutely everything. In my training classes with Mikritik, I always jokingly say, what about the little fridge where you've got your egg holder monitoring how many eggs is in the fridge, and by the time you get below a certain threshold, your fridge actually contact Willis and say, Willis, listen, this address, my eggs is finished, bring. Possible or not? Internet of Things, very possible. Is it going to happen? It's already happening. So what is going to block you to get more and more things? It's your imagination. A few of the services that's available. Amazon, they charge you per million messages. So we do think a million messages is a lot. Not really. If you think about this, measuring a temperature, take a reading about every like 15 seconds or maybe 20 seconds or even a little bit later, you're very quickly going to run into millions of messages, and it's going to cost you. Microsoft Azure, they give you about 8,000 messages per day for free. The rest you must pay. IBM Watson IoT platform, 100 megs, so they measure it in not in messages, but in the amount of data that's flowing. And then we get the cheaper ones. Things speak. The beauty about Things Speak is it's got math labs already incorporated on your first server. So instead of moving to a third server or a different device to do your analyzing for you, things speak, I've already got MATLAB built in and you can do a hell of a lot of analyzing and making decisions in the software already. Things work, 
it's very close to the things network, but they specialize in industrial applications, so you can go that way. And then the one that Mikritik is looking at at the moment is the things network. It's a free network at the moment, and it's specific LoRaWAN network, fitting very well into the picture of Mikritik. There's some others also available, big ones, cloud, or Google Cloud Platform, also charging you. And look at that sort of amount. That's the only one where I could get a amount uh, already specified, $1,758 per month. So you can see that they're actually hitting you quite a bit for data running around, the bigger guys. And that's when the things now as a free service come in very, very handy. Article pricing per device. So they don't worry how many data you push for everything you register with them, for that thing you're gonna pay a certain amount. And then there's obviously lots and lots and lots more of them. At Mikritik, they have decided for starters, they're gonna work with the Things Network. And why did they decide? Maybe not the main, main reason for that, but the Things Network being a LoRa or a LoRa WAN specialist network available to, to us for no money and we can go and place gateways wherever we want to, I think that's fitting the Mikritik profile very, very well for the devices they're trying to and what they are trying to achieve to do. Then the last thing we have to look at this is on, we've got our sensor, we push the data to a gateway, from a gateway we pushed it to the cloud, and now from the cloud we're pushing it to some sort of application. And really when I started opening up and trying to find out what applications I will actually expose you to, I realized that's gonna be a lecture of about two days on its own that's available. I have got an ID on that database where the data is going to. So I will know what sensor is sending me the data. I've got a time and a date stamp and I've got the value. Please try and tell me what you cannot do with that. What more do I need? I've got what any software developer would dream of. I can give him that and he can do with that whatever he wants. And as I said, I don't think we will cover in one day if I start talking about all the possibilities when I've got those three pieces of data available to myself. So we can do whatever we like. You, we can pull it into a spreadsheet. You can work out averages. You can <laughs> pull graphs of that. You can make decisions if I go higher, if then. If I'm higher, then that value do something. If I'm lower, then that value do something. It is just unbelievable what we can do. All right, so let's have a look at the Mikritik's offering. Mikritik is offering this kit to us. We've got the LoRa card um, available but I also offer the kit. Now, I was very excited. Oh, uh, who had a word with me? Kaspers, 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 I don't know how you pronounce his name, from the training, contacted me and said, listen, if we send you the kit, will you stand in front of, will you be brave enough to stand in front of the audience today and tell them a little bit more about it? And I immediately say yes, <laughs> because I like this type of, of thing he keeps me play of. And I didn't try to put the card into another Mikritik because I were expecting fireworks out of this kit. And I think Norm has mentioned it this morning, how easy it actually connect. And when I got my kit, I realized the only thing that's on the kit that will not be on a normal Mikritik that's got the PCI slot where you can slot this card in, was that on the LoRa settings specifically, they had on the servers two lines of information. They gave the US TTN site, the URL of the TTN, and they called it TTN US, and they opened up the ports, and they had TTN Europe, UE, and the URL, and the two ports that we needed. <laughs> 
So all my excitement waiting specific for this kit uh, was nearly a waste of time. So you can really put that card into any other micro kit. The only advantage the so-called kit had, it predefined those two values for me. So we don't really need the kit. We can do that in any other device. So to set up the system, he mentioned to you that it's a, a absolute breeze to set it up. And I have tried it, and it's working. On the win box on the left-hand side, in the tabs on the left-hand side, you will see there's a new entry that's called LoRa. I didn't have a look yesterday if it's on all the stuff or only if there's a LoRa card plugged in. It might also be that you'll have to download it as in the applications, that you must download that specific LoRa kit for it, but it's available. You then go to the servers, and as you can see, there's the, the, the LoRa kit's advantage. They're already telling you that TTN US and TTN UE, and they give you the website and the two ports that open. So if you haven't got that in your own Mikrotik, that's what they supply in this one, so just enter it and you've got it. You then go and activate a device. So when you activate the device, it will give you that device ID, and that's the device ID you're going to need to activate the TTN portal that he talked about. Next step is we'll go to TTN itself, the Things Network, you register for an account, you, as soon as you've registered your account, free of charge, you go to gateways, in the gateways you register that specific gateway. So the gateway get registered with the gateway ID that was available in the Mikrotik. So you add those values in, you choose the rest as on my screen. I think the important one is the um, protocol that we're gonna use. And I haven't got my glasses on, so I'll have to walk here. <laughs> is that uh, for using the leg le legacy packet forwarder. That's fairly important that you must select that. Once you've selected that, your Mikrotik is set up to speak to the gateway. You can then also, if you want to map it, and that's what I said, I think the information I showed you a while ago with all the maps is not accurate because a lot of people will most probably not map it, but you can map it, you can put your coordinates in, and then the Things Network will show your gateway on that specific place, and if you make it public, other people can actually via your gateway go into the Things Network. This took about three or four minutes to set up, and if you go back to the Things Network, you will now see that your gateway is connected. As simple as that. That really was, I think, less than a five minute exercise. So I'm connected now. The next thing I have to do is I have to get some sort of sensor, and that's where my little Arduinos come in again. If for those of you who know, maybe the Arduino board, the Arduino board is sitting below that little reddish board. The reddish board is a Dragino LoRa kit that you can purchase. And that little green PC board on the red board is actually the physical LoRa WAN wireless card. So that's how small it is. Plugged into the Arduino board on in the front, I've got to think it's a DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. I got them running, downloaded the software from GitHub on the internet, downloaded it into my Arduino board, and voila, on the right-hand side, that's the result of this whole exercise. I get a reading on the TTA network that tells me my humidity at the moment is this, and my temperature is whatever it be. Can it be easier? Not really. All right, so in short, that is what I can tell you about Internet of Things, it's old technology, it's coming from years, but we boxed it in to industrial sites, to big control systems, etc. And what we're busy to do at the moment, we make this available to everybody. The whole idea is that if you build a little sensor like this, it must come down to a few dollars so that you can implement in your own household 10, 20, 30, 50 do sensors. And what's your limitation? Your imagination. Thank you very much.
But I, I think we're very close to our lunch break. What's the time? Yes, I made it to four minutes. All right, our lunch break's five o'clock. I'll be around if you want to ask some questions. Uh, but go and enjoy the lunch, and I think the next speaker is up in an hour and a half. All right, thank you, guys. Registers with your gateway, or yeah, just yeah. for your gateway, just no. You you you've got a you've got a slide in the. I mean, for example, I yeah. I, mean, I, I can also buy LoRa devices or sensors. Just plug in my wall outlet yeah. to power them, and then yeah. they start sending. In TTM, you will register the thing also. Which I didn't right. mention that. Didn't so you get you get a you get on your device. Get like a MAC address, you just create uh, a key for you. Put that key but in. But multiple yeah. gateways can Mul receive so I can, I can the gateway. Yeah. 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 Yeah